We don't want to take a uniform step size throughout solving an initial value problem for the same reasons as when we did integration. In many problems, the solution switches between changing very slowly and changing very quickly, so we want to take the most efficient step we can all the time. There's a big difference from integration, though. In integration, we could divide and conquer through the domain. But that depended on knowing the integrand function everywhere from the beginning. In an initial value problem, we have to march the solution forward in time before we know exactly what it is that we're going to integrate. So divide and conquer is off the table. Instead, we will use this strategy. We use one of our formulas to compute the next value v for the solution. Then we decide whether v is accurate enough. If it is, we accept it and consider the step finished. Either way, we'll decide whether to adjust the time step h for the next try and go back to the beginning of the loop. By the definition of truncation error of order p, the difference between the computed solution and the exact solution after one step is roughly proportional to h to the p plus 1 power. We call this quantity e of h for the error using time step size h. If we used a different step size, q times h, then the error changes by a factor q to the p plus 1. Say the goal is to pick q so that the error equals some desired value epsilon. Then we can solve for q in terms of epsilon and e of h. Hence, when we've done a step of size h, we can use hindsight to say that what we should have used was q times h. This gives us a strategy for updating h the next time based on the observed error. That's one of the boxes in our outline. The remaining missing detail in this outline is how to estimate the error in a proposed solution value. Here we do sort of follow the idea we used in integration. We'll run two formulas in parallel, one of order p and another of order p plus 1. Since the higher order formula is more accurate, we'll use the difference between them as a good estimate of the error in ui plus 1. There is a catch. A runga cut formula of order p requires at least p stages. And for order p plus 1, we need at least p plus 1 stages. So altogether, we need 2p plus 1 stages, which is about twice the number we would have, would have had to use without doing any error estimation. Fortunately, there's a remedy. Rather than using two unrelated runga kata formulas, we can use what's called an embedded formula. Here's one from the book called BS23. You can see that there are four stages total, and those stages are shared by two different methods that combine them differently. One gets, va gets a value of order 2, and the other gets a value of order 3. This way, we can save on the total number of stages needed down to four. Now there's an additional subtle savings here that I'll explain in the code that actually makes the effective number of stages equal to 3 for each time step. Here's a code implementing adaptive Runga-Kutta using the embedded scheme of orders 2 and 3. The inputs are what we've seen before, the function defining the ODE, an uh, interval in time, initial value, and a desired tolerance setting and the outputs are the same as they always are with the ODE solvers. So I'll skip over the initialization, get down here to the main loop, so we keep going until we've gotten to the end. This little bit here, okay, is to say, well, if h is too small to even change this floating point number, which is the current time, 
then we can't go on. And remember, this can happen if the solution actually goes to infinity at a finite time. So we just print out a warning and we break out of this loop, which will return the values to whoever called this function. But assuming that doesn't happen, we go on. We compute some Runge kind of stages. We compute our second order value here. And then we compute another stage. And instead of computing the third order, all we need is the difference between the third order and the second order. So that's what this is. And we let e be the norm of that. We have to use norm, not absolute value, in case this is a vector. And we'll compare that to the maximum error in a both relative and absolute sense. So here's the big decision step. If the error is small enough, then we accept the value and move on. Now this last line here is the subtle savings in this particular method. So it so happens that the S1 stage, or the first stage of the next step, is identical to the last stage of this step. So I don't have to recompute the stage next time. I can just reuse. And so that's why it's really only, see, three calls to DUDT for each time step. So whether or not we accept the step, we're going to adjust the step size. This is slightly smaller than the Q that the theory predicts, just because it's not a perfect error estimate, so we want to be conservative. If Q is smaller than 1, then we will make the step smaller next time. If Q is bigger than 1, that means we uh, over resolve things. We've got more accuracy than we really need, so we'll try a larger step next time. But I'm not going to let that step grow too quickly all at once. And then finally, we don't want to go past the end of the interval. Let's take a look at the adaptive Runge-Kutta in action. Here I've defined a function which is going to be du dt, and I'll solve that using the RK23 method and look at the answer. So here we're seeing the steps that were actually chosen by the solver, and so it starts out with a medium or a larger size step, then the suddenly, suddenly the solution changes quickly, so you get small steps, and then after it slows down again, you start to take larger and larger steps once more. We can look at that more carefully. Diff t will take the difference between all the adjacent values of t. So t2 minus t1, and then t3 minus t2, and so on. So if I plot that as a function of the times that these steps are taken at, then you see, in fact, at that same time when the solution changes rapidly, is when the step size is decreasing dramatically. So the step sizes actually range over about three orders of magnitude. Another way of looking at it is if my accuracy is going to be governed by the smallest step size, right, then that would have been about 5 times 10 to the minus 5, whereas the average step size that I actually took was nearly a thousand times larger. So even though the individual steps are more expensive, we have to do more work to get them. The fact that I've saved such a huge factor more than makes up for it.